Welcome back to Let's Play Star Driver 2 as Stalwart Pachyderm. I am playing Stock Chuck version 1.1 Brutal Difficulty. Let's get back at it. Last episode we left off with pirates coming in and we were plotting out how we were going to take on this two wars that we have going on currently. Um, we just have to finish building up at least a semblance of a, of a fleet before we can go on the offensive. We will need two offensive ships, along with our two heroes, should be sufficient. It's going to be a couple of turns still. But we're actually almost to the point where we can go aggressive. These pirates won't know what hit them. Actually, they will know what hit them. They just won't have much time to do anything about it. So sort of the you can know what hits you all day long but not much you can actually do about it in this case all right don't move all right begin target trying to figure out what the uh, command is to go all cinematic view, but I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I figured it out once. Uh, it's like control or shift or alt or something. I don't know. Pirate loot. Oh no, there's a pirate base out there, folks. I think it's that one. <laughs> all right. Three turns, or we could purchase it out right now. I think we'll purchase it out right. Shave uh, three turns off the completion of that. Right. Uh, oops, I almost forgot to uh, launch troops. Chill. Launch. Well, it looks like he got a second colony up here. Unless he just never had a more than had to begin with. Alright, so we're gonna actually make a dog leg. What are you? That's bad. Very interesting that he's coming from over here. Which leads me to believe there's a wormhole. We do have a star base up. Alright, so let's go ahead and design a uh, small. We'll use this one. You design a small defensive ship um, to help the uh, star base out and. I think we'll do this. Arc extended rapid fire. And then. Do we do that? Or do we do this? Mm -hmm. I think we want to do that to begin with. Uh, basic command. Put our command pod on. Doesn't really matter where. Power engines. Sad face. Uh, 
Do we just do that? That's a hundred seconds of ammunition. I mean, that's decent combat maneuverability. It's not great, but it's decent. Um, the only thing I worry about if I did this, that I just wouldn't have the... We could do that, compromise, do that, and add on more am ammo. I think we'll, we'll do this. Uh, small... Def uh, I can't type. Render Chuck. Save. I'm really sort of unhappy with the design. Um, I'd be more happy with doing that, though. That makes me happier. We'll do that. And then, no. Go ahead and slap you on the line. Wow, that's expensive. I'm not going to get that up in time. There's no way I get that up in time. So... I can't stop this fleet from getting to the planet. So if they destroy if they destroy the star base, I don't have an infantry base here yet. I'm going to actually need an infantry base. But I, I can't afford to build it. So I'm not going to have any troops to defend the planet. So if they destroy the star base, they're going to take the planet. I'm going to have to retake, which is why I'm moving the fleet back. Discuss. I still really want aeroponic farms. That is the most useful thing you've got here, although... <laughs> He's got both fusion power and fusion engines. But, I mean, I just don't have high enough technology to trade for him yet. To trade for those yet. Oh, I have to give him two techs. For two equal techs for the same... Which I'm pretty sure I'm fine with. Airpon Farms is good enough that I'd be willing to pay for both of those for it. Alright. Plus, hopefully it'll make him less inclined to attack me. I really don't need to be fighting all of my neighbors simultaneously. Now let's build an aeroponic farm here. Which means I won't have to ship food here until I get some way to expand that population above three. And... There's really nowhere else I really need to actually build it currently. Alright, here's praying that we actually uh, survive. <clears throat> let's let's uh, see. Uh, well, actually no, we need to kill the we need to kill the cruiser. Unfortunately they're just bobbing back and forth at long range, which makes them really hard to hit. Movement is the key to defending against long-range fire. So, it's annoying. <laughs> Especially with... Sh when, when, you're, when your stuff's this inaccurate, and then they're moving around like that, it makes it really hard. <laughs> it's like, can I get a lucky hit? Can I get a lucky hit? Uh, let's look at his design. Okay, it's just... This is the stock design. Uh, very first stock design that you'll run into. Wow, I haven't hit a single artillery shot yet. At least my laser cannons are chewing up the uh, incoming corvettes. That's good. Oh, we hit twice. We hit twice. And moderate damage to uh, his armor plating on the side there.
taken out a, quite a bit on his side. And there we go. Got him. Whoa, lucky shot. We just took out one of his uh, frigates with a single artillery shot to actually hit it. Lucky shot, actually, for the artillery to actually hit that. It looks like we defended. Excellent. Excellent, we defended. Excellent. Excellent. That is really good for us. We can turn the fleet back around and go on the offensive now. Or we can try to find that uh, wormhole. And I'd rather go for where I know there's colonies than where there might be a wormhole to the core system. So I'd rather come out here, grab up a couple of planets, then hit the Corazine's home worlds. And finish off full far later. Alright, so we actually won't need to start the small defender yet, so we're gonna go ahead and push the infantry base up. Aeroponic Farms is gonna go up to right before the alright, there we go. Can I move you down? I can. Alright, excellent. Alright, I'll actually move you down there. Cause we need more research. Research. Yeah, alright. Those look good. Four turns on the aeroponic farm there. Excellent. Really? He's turning back. He <laughs> He's sending ships back in. Wow, well, okay. Um good luck with that. <laughs> okay, he ran away. <laughs> Alright, mass drivers are researched. Um Well, we have the option of going for class 1 shields. Um, we do know humans have class 1 shields, and if we save up some BC, there's a very good chance we could get better than class 1 shields. Um, actually, there's a guarantee we'll get better than class 1 shields if we save up our BC, because we can go down to Port, Port Sar. We already know where it's at. It's a short hop. So I'm inclined to not go for class 1 shields this game. Instead, we'll get uh, ion beams. And we're actually losing money currently. That's because we're not producing excess food, which is actually what was holding up our economy before this. And, but that doesn't matter right now. And... I'm thinking we go for fusion power and then we barter fusion engines later from the humans. We could theoretically barter both at a later date. But I think I'd rather have fusion power earlier than bartering will get it to me. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I need we need fusion power now for our ship designs, because our ships are so uh, inefficient in their layout. Um, we can't really fit large amounts of 2x2 uh, two two, uh, power generators in our ships, so we need to make our power generation as efficient as possible. Right there, that's where the wormhole is. It's right there. And yeah, it goes to right there. So actually, when we get that small defender built, we'll actually send it up here to scout it, because we don't care if we lose it. And he's sending in a pretty sizable force. Uh, two snipers should be able to hold that with the star base, no problem, though. Yeah, we can do that. All right. It's looking like this, the planet for this system is right over here. And we've got incoming hostile crystals coming down to here, which we won't be able to do anything about. <clears throat> but we can build an aeroponics farm to help out on the starvation problem, 
when that happens. Air pocket farm. Set up the queue, I think. Air pocket farm is done here, so we're building trade goods. Excellent. Alright, so this plant produces 17. Uh, 5. Yeah, okay, so do that. <coughs> Yeah, we'll just leave that for now. And we've got, yeah, we got two ships defending this. So he's got uh, multiple. He's got one Corvette, it looks like. Or one. Wow, Corvette. One cruiser. No, three cruisers. Hey, hey, hey! That's also my design. Oh, my goodness. So this ship here. And this ship here, I actually designed in a single player uh, run. I actually designed these in a single player run when I was playing as the Corazine. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. That's a uh, stock design, though, right there. <clears throat> The, the one thing that Corazine have going against them is their ships are really slow. They don't have a lot of engine space and they have a lot of other slots. These ships right here, this ship here will be actually be pretty quick because it has a very large engine. It has very good thrust weight. This one has very poor thrust weight, but it wasn't designed to go fast either. It was designed to stay at range. <clears throat> uh, we should still be okay defending that. Um, however, something we might want to do, since there's so many fighters coming in on that group, can we get a couple of small defenders built anytime like a reasonable amount of time? No, we can't. Well, we have to hope we can hold. If we don't hold, we'll lose the home world. It's looking like. Because I really don't think that Mr. This guy here can actually hold off in full-fledged invasion. Like, maybe? <laughs> maybe? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he'd be able... Well, there's only like six or eight infantry coming in. He might be able to hold. <laughs> but hopefully you won't have to be put to the test. Hopefully. Oh, I forgot to make these immobile. I designed them. My bad. Alright, All right, we have... I'm pretty sure that's the most dangerous design right there. So, it needs to die first. It is the quickest, I know that. We do have railguns, so that's actually pretty nice. Our starbase has railguns. It's taken pretty significant damage, actually. Well, something back here ran into a shot aimed at that ship. <laughs> Took another rail. And here comes the mass missile fire, and we don't have jammers. This is gonna suck. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Alright, we have cleared the first ship, and I think it's time to focus on the incoming sm smalls. They're, if we can kill these quickly, like that. Alright, 
Now I'll go for other cruisers that are coming in. Actually, we actually lucked out that a lot of those incoming missiles were actually hit by outgoing uh, artillery fire. Which saved our bacon, really. Cleared enough with our artillery fire shots hitting them that the point defense is able to take out almost all the missiles coming in. I think we got hit with like two missiles. Which is nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we held with minimal damage. And the successful defense, guys. Successful defense. Excellent. Excellent. I'm actually really interested to see if the... Uh, Oh, so he's got a calling out here now. We had just enough fuel to get here, guys. <laughs> uh, excellent. Alright, so this guy... I wonder why this guy got put down here. He should have been up there. Is, my mouse is being really annoying. I really wish I knew why I was doing that. Victory. And I noticed that the audio volume on that map was balanced out way better than it was previously, which is very nice that the audio levels got balanced. Alright, so we are now refueled, which is actually new. That didn't used to happen. Used to, when you just freshly conquered a world, you would have to wait a turn in orbit in order to get fueled. And launch everybody! Out of River Bay and the Star Base. Those two and then that. Alright. Oh no! That was the uh, supply ship route going to that wormhole. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Alright, so we have a fleet here. Go ahead and plot an intercept for that fleet. And... Oh, sweet. We got our third uh, worker here. Okay, so... That's 1 BC. 1 BC or 4 research. We need the research, so we'll go with the research. And, yeah, okay, so... Yeah. 
we have taken our first world, and here we've got our first fight without a starbase backing us up. Two snipers and two hero ships. We'll be safe from missiles because of this little enemy ship right there, and we'll kill everything with these three ships. And because I'm a derp, I keep forgetting to build my ships with the uh, immobile, which is the way I prefer to build them. And I completely forgot to set their attack ranges to max so that they wouldn't move when I target them. Alright, so we're going to let them close to right about here, and then we're going to target the cruiser. <sighs> oh, we're going to have to let them close to right about here, actually. Yeah. We're not effective ranges. Right about here. Alright. Alright, there we go. Target the cruiser, everybody. Yeah, we're producing about the same volume as a starbase by itself with those three ships. That's about a starbase worth of uh, fire output. Uh, we just don't have the mix, the full mix range as the starbase would. The starbase would also have uh, laser cannons. I also like the fact that now when you zoom all the way out, you can't hear the battle. It's basically silent. But as you zoom in, it gets louder. So that's a nice feature as well. Get some! Boom. Next ship. Ouch. Oh, that looked like it hurt. Oh my. Boom. Boom. Next ship. Clean their clocks. Alright. <laughs> Another victory for the Chuck. What? Affiliate? Empire? I'm not sure what they are. Are they an affiliate or an empire? I would I would have to assume affiliate based on their whole individualistic uh, stuff. Individual individualistic trader hive thing. I think they're an affiliate. Um we got done with our fusion power. Which is amazing. Main engineering will be really handy when we get up to Battleship and Titan. We need to get Plasteel Armor, however. Uh, titanium Armor is... or uh, Steel Armor is not going to hold up very much longer as a good idea. It's just not going to work very much longer. Hmm. What technologies do you have? Class 1 shields, fusion engines. We can actually trade fusion engines. Wow. For something else? Cell nourishment? He's actually already got uh, fusion power. Oh, but he... Because we're uh, ugly. He won't trade with us no matter what at this point. It'd take a really long time. It'd be really hard to actually get any trade relations with him. Right, next turn we get our next planet. He has a starbase here, so we'll actually be finding a starbase. Let's not derp this up, shall we? I just wish I could drag them all simultaneously once I get them in the layout I want. Alright, don't move around. Um, don't move around either. <laughs> Just don't move around. Hey, still. Your artillery ships. <clears throat> oh, 
don't move. Just don't move. I want them all to be aiming at this ship. I want his uh, guns to all aim at this ship, because it's got shields. I, I wasn't thinking about that. I shouldn't have placed him directly behind either. Because anything that misses this tiny little ship are going to hit him. Shouldn't matter though in the long run. I don't think he'll get enough shots off to even matter. We're just nailing him left and right. That star base is almost down. And boom! A victory. Now these heroes, these two heroes, are making this incredibly easy at this point in the game. Just incredibly easy. I don't think I can I can stress how easy this is with these two heroes, and how difficult it would be without them. Oh, this one's still really loud. Ah, my ears! My ears! My guys are spawning in weird orders now. So what I said earlier about them spawning in a specific order is no longer the case apparently. So I lied, my bad. I didn't know it was the thing anymore. But now you all know. Don't be fooled. Yeah, I gotta admit, that was a really great thing. Bravery only gets you so far. After that comes technology. Alright, and we have another world. And Starbase for Schleb trade goods. Excellent. And we'll go ahead and launch everybody. There still is no launch all button, which is disappointing. Lunch. And everyone goes for lunch. Or launch, well, you know. Yeah, this is interesting. We fully replenished our fuel cells, but we didn't fully replenish our ammo. Interesting behavior. Uh, these two ships are so confused. Like, they were over here heading here, and now they're over here heading there. I don't know where they're, what they're doing, or where they're coming from, or... It's nearly done. All right, let's look at our empire screen. Where can we optimize for better income? See, the two worlds we conquered are actually costing us quite a bit of money right now. This one in particular, seven BCs. This one's making us nine, that's a uh, steel one. Our home world's making us five. Uh, yeah. We'll actually tr start dropping production on Steel 1, I think, for more research. Alright, I really want to find out where that wormhole is. So we're going to actually be aiming to shoot past it there. Uh, Plasteel's done researching, which is excellent. Um, now here's one of those situations where normally I would advocate for asteroid superstructure so you could fit more population onto your asteroids because they have that no um, pollution bonus. However, in this situation, because we're we have a plus population bonus to our um, planet cap and we have such a large population to begin with, we're actually going to go for the orbital habitat so we can fit more people onto regular planets where we can farm if need be, rather than onto the asteroids, I think. Well, let me think about this actually. If we put two more onto the asteroids, we'd be at five on the asteroids base. We could do plus two with uh, orbital or with the um, biospheres when we get them, so that'd be seven. We could have seven population asteroids if we did this one. 
Oh, that's tempting. You know what? Forget what I just said. Asteroid superstructures. Always get them. Forget everything else. <laughs> Nothing else is important. <laughs> Actually, we need to get Imperial Banks. Um, we're starting to get large enough as an empire that Imperial Banks will be very useful for our continued expansion. Help out with the income issue. And, uh... That's not scary. That's not scary at all. That is not scary. Great. Don't move. Don't move. Set our attack range behavior. Yeah, that's our attack range right here. Wait till they get here. If we even target. Should we even target? I don't think we'll even target. We'll just let our ships auto fire. Because these ships are all very so small. So. Shot at once with artillery and it dies. Uh, nice knowing you. Bye bye. Well, folks, that was a really tough fight. Really tough. There's Cordon Off. Go for Cordon Out. It's got a cruiser in orbit. Damn it. We didn't even get within range to find that. On the other hand, that fleet is going to meet a remnant. <clears throat> uh, I hope the remnant doesn't derp up and die. <laughs> Please, game, don't troll me. <laughs> We need to actually set these guys up with proper weapon loadouts. So it looks like I didn't get trolled. I think the remnants wiped out that invasion fleet, which is what I want. Shoot me. I'm just a little ship. Har, har, har. Um, yeah, that should have been that targeting should have been unnecessary. Pretty sure it is unnecessary. Yay, okay, now they're shooting at this guy, no one's directly behind him, so anything that misses him is not hitting another ship. <coughs> Pardon me. Try to inhale saliva. Not the most uh, efficient thing to do. Oh no, guys. We don't have any power on this ship. Oh, they still... He, Zero never fixed that. The power output on these default ships is questionable. Well, this one's producing excess power. But he never fixed this one. Practice has so many components more than it should have. I mean, it's this advanced ECM jammer, beam weapon, probably something back here that you can't see, missile launchers that are 
more than that are at least two tiles longer than the available space. <laughs> like <laughs> that default, that uh, special ship. It's almost as if um, that hero ship was designed using the Star Drive One ship model, and not the scaled down size of the Star Drive Two ships. Because Star Drive Two ships that are are like. 40 to 50 percent smaller than Star Drive One ships were for, for class per class like per ship per class they're smaller about 40 to 50 percent smaller. Um. Mouse please. All right, and then ah, I keep forgetting I can't select multiple ships and set their engagement range all at the same time. That'd be a great great thing to have have all right so take out the cruiser that is priority number one just because it has fusion beams and I don't have shields the fusion beams if it gets in close will ruin my day absolutely ruin it fortunately it's a slow ship uh, I mean it's fast for a cordon but it's a slow ship and then uh, Alright. Looks like we focused it took out all of his weapons though. Let's take out the control compound. Wonder why he's running but way then. It's odd. He still has weapons, but he's running away. One railgun and one artillery did that to him, by the way. That's <laughs> yes. Oh get wrecked. Oh get wrecked. Missiles. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh man. All right. Go for it. <laughs> go, go, go. Hit powered engines and he instantly runs out of power. <laughs> well, he instantly turns off because he has no power output. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Nice knowing you. Cordonat will be mine. And we can take Cordonat. It's so tempting to click auto when there's only one defender. But I know. I just know it'll end horribly, horribly if I do that. So must resist the urge to click auto. Defensive shields. Come here, little owl. He doesn't have a laser gun, does he? Nope. He's a melee owl. Something that's not terribly frightening sounding. An owl charging you with a knife. That doesn't really frighten me. Probably something about owls trying to wield knives. Seems amusing, not scary. Looks good to me. So if we look here, we got Noxium here. Uh, ultra rich, Terran. 
And it's owned by the Volfar. And we've got Oceanic Ultra Poor Large, which, I mean, our homeworld's a poor, we'll colonize that too. It's no worse than our homeworld, basically. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is, right, so we stole these planets, which means we have a subterranean bonus that they didn't. And I'm showing up a three here. I wonder if it's, I can fit six of these guys on here, then I'm going to have three space left over that I can only assign my people into. I wonder if that's the case. Hmm. We'll find out when this population hits six, if it stops growing. That'll probably be what that three there means. I, need, I can fit six normal, but I can fit three additional if I put my population on it. Which, of course, I will do if that is the case. Alright. And with the destruction of Cordonaut, we actually have a fight here on our hands. We'll take uh, Cordon 2 and we'll call that an episode. So with the invasion of Cordon 2 done, um, once we get this done, we'll call it, a, call it an episode. Alright, next turn. Ah, birds of a feather flocking together. How appropriate. Alright, so, melee, 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 melee. Laser rifle. Makes me hilarious. I think it it's hilarious that there's a Union Jack in the background of the Cortesine infantry. <laughs> yeah, it's off color, but it's a Union Jack. I'm sorry, it's a Union Jack. I think it's hilarious. The Brits. That is it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. I've been Solar Pecular, and I'm playing, as a reminder, I'm playing on Brutal. This is version 1.1, my very first game on it. Um, playing as Stock Chuck. So far, it's going pretty well. Um, Trailhack Council never expanded. The United Federation is expanding. Uh, Cortazine expanded. We'll be eating them up. Volfar expanded and actually colonized in Cordon system, or took it. I'll, we'll find out when we take that planet what the population is. We'll determine whether or not they took it or colonized it. Um, but that isn't how they got over to here. And we took that planet from them, and we took that planet from them. So, to recap, we started here. We have taken these two systems, and we've almost completed taking Cordon. There's one Volfar planet in the system we have to take. After that, we will uh, be pushing into these this region. Um, there's going to be one planet here, I think, to take. Probably in this system, it looks like. Although, come to think of it, this looks like there's a colony here, too. So, one, two colonies, then into the Volfar homeworld. And their ma first major expansion colony, which is this one. And it'll be back to push out the arm that the Cortazine went down. I think is how we'll do it. Um, might need to... At before we uh, push into the Volfar, we might need to move this fleet up to the Cordon system to protect it. Um, which, actually, I should go ahead and uh, get more ships building here. I'll build uh, four more snipers. And, yeah, two snipers and two small defense ships. Seems good. Alright, thank you for joining me.